What's going on guys, my name is Tamir Xangas and today I'm playing some FTL which stands for Faster Than Light, which is the method of travel in this game, hence the name. So, like... Um, so... If you're completely new to the game, there's... You... You play as the... Actually, it'll explain as it go along. The story does a good, good job of explaining itself as it goes along. But... My crew, it, so my ship is called the Inflictor. I have a burst laser Mark II, which slightly improved version of the burst laser that fires more shots per charge. Required power, two. Charge time, 12 seconds. Shots per charge, three. Normal damage, one. Fire chance, low. So yeah. Also, we're gonna turn advanced edition um, content on because I'm advanced. Okay, so my crew members are Admiral Bailey, who's a human, and his only perk is his skills improve slightly faster. I have Commander Jackson, who is a mantis. He inflicts 1.5 um, times damage in combat, 1.2 times movement speed, and halved repair speed. So he's not very good at repairing stuff, but he's good at fighting. Sergeant Corey is a rock man. He's immune to fire. His movement speed is halved, and his max health is increased to 150. So the normal max health is 100. And Engineer Osprey, um, who's an NG, and his repair repair speed is doubled, and his combat damage inflicted is half. So he's not good at fighting. He's like the opposite of Commander Jackson. But let's get straight into this. So, the data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing Rebel fleet can catch up. Tip, door subsystem. Upgrading your doors will greatly reduce the chance of fire spreading between rooms and will significantly slow border movement. So, we have some information about um, the rebel rebels, which are war. There's the Federation, I'm playing as the Federation cruiser, and the Federation is at war with the rebels, and the rebels are winning the war, but I have information that could turn the tide of the war, but I need to get it to the Federation before the rebels kill me. So let's make our first jump, and there's a distress beacon here, which is pretty good, because sometimes it'll be a trap. Pirates set off their distress beacon so that, um, what's the word? So that innocent ships will come to try and help them, and then they'll attack them. But other times, people generally need help. You arrive at the distress beacon near a small asteroid belt and find a ship with pirate markings partially crushed between two large rocks. It must have been illegally mining the belt without proper equipment. So the options are, try to dislodge the ship by shooting at the rocks, destroy and loot the ship, they're just pirates, or this third blue option, or in any situation, a blue option normally has a better outcome and you can only access blue options if you have meet certain requirements. So for this one I need a beam weapon which is this, this thing down here. So let's use the beam weapon to cut the ship out. You use your beam weapon to make a few precision cuts in the asteroid. The ship gives a quick burst of thrust and the rocks crumble away. They thank you and offer some of the resources they've collected. So I got one of these which is fuel one of these, which is drone parts, which I don't need right now, but if I get a drone system later on in the game, I'll need them. And I've got scrap, which is currency. So, sorry if I'm going a bit fast-paced, but um, I'm kind of assuming that you know a bit, at least a little bit about the game. But for those of you who don't, these along here are systems. Shields, engines, medbay, and I can turn that off and give more power to my engine so my engines are better because I don't need to heal anyone right now. Got um, oxygen supply, my beam weapon that automatically fires, and my controllable weapons which I can aim at whatever I want. And subsystems, you, they're automatically fully powered 
and there's piloting, censoring, and doors. Censoring, not censoring. Sensors. Now let's jump to the next. Now a good thing to do, a good strategy, is to explore, but not too much, so that the rebel fleet attacks you. Mercenaries are swarming the galaxy now, knowing that their less than legal services are in demand during this period of unrest. One is waiting at this beacon and hails you. Hire the mercenary to delay the rebels. Hire the mercenary to scout the sector. Fight the ship, or you have no need of his services. Well, I have some scrap, so I want him. I want to see what's in the sector. So I'll hire him to scout the sector. Now, if we jump, it tells us where everything is. There's a possible ship here. There's a possible ship here. There's a um, ion storm here. There's a sun too close to the beacon here. And there's an asteroid field here. So I think our best course of action would be to go through here, up to the store, and then round like that. See, this is why the map is useful, because I wouldn't have had this information. You jump into a sector of the nebula beset by a plasma storm. An automatic eaten rebel scout stationed at the beacon moves into attack. Now, I've got like hardly any power, so I'm in big trouble. So I power up my lasers. I should just be able to take out his weapons, because he has reduced power too, because the ion storm is ionizing me, and so I have less power. But he's also in the ion storm, so he's losing power too. Oh, I forgot I paused it. I'm so silly. Yeah, um, you can press space to pause. It's good to do that before a battle because... Oh, no. Okay, I want to power up the shields instead of the weapons. I just need to protect myself. Until I get out of here because we're in trouble. This guy's a lot better than us at, in this fight. Normally, a cruiser, like my Federation cruiser, would be able to take down a scout easy. But in the Nebula Storm, I'm at a severe disadvantage and I'm going to send my fast repair, fast repair guy to fix the oxygen before we all suffocate. Am I talking too fast? That didn't sound good. If you heard that noise, that means there was a breach. So it doesn't look like there's a ship here. So you can go here and... Okay. So, a pirate ship arrives shortly after you. Judging from the fact that it is attempting to avoid your ship, you assume that it's a smuggler trying to stay away from beacons. Let's ignore it because I don't... I need to fix this stuff. So... If we go into this room, you can see there's a hole in the floor, a breach. That's what that noise meant. And these red stripes in this room mean that um, there's no oxygen in the room because there's a hole in it. So I'm going to heal up the my crew members that have been hurt and then I'm going to send Commander... Not Commander. What is he? That's pause. Engineer Osprey. I'm going to send Osprey in to fix the doors so I can control my doors again. And I'm going to send Corey to find the fire because he can put out any fires without worrying because he's immune to fire. It's a really good thing to have. Now, I can tell that none of my systems are on fire because. Um, they would have a little symbol saying they're on fire. If so, it means one of the empty rooms are on fire. I can't seem to find it. it. Must be up here. Here we go. Here's the fire, and it's put into here. So I need to send everyone to the med bay. Not sure if you saw, but for the brief time the fire was in the engine, there was a symbol above the engines down here that said fire. Now there's this really useful 
feature, if I press this, returns everyone to where they were. So I can save crew positions, and then when I press this button, I can still hear a fire. Dang it. Must be up here. But yeah, I can save crew positions, and then at any time, see, there's the little fire indicator above the engine thing. Actually, Corey get in here, open the airlock, and suffocate the fire. Oh, another thing I should mention is that the sensors never work in nebulas, because nebulas disrupt sensors. But if you can hear, the fire noise is gone. So if I shut all the doors and I send the injured crew members to their um, to the med bay to heal up, we should be ready to head back to our positions and make the jump to the next beacon, which is here. So there's an asteroid field here. So I'm gonna have to fight someone. A pirate ship was lying in wait inside this asteroid field. It immediately moves into attack. So, if I turn on this first laser and attack his weapons, the asteroids should take out his shield. Because we're in an asteroid field, asteroids will constantly batter the ship. Oh, they missed all. They must have good piloting to, um, so it missed that much. Oh, but there was some... That was silly. <laughs> Alright, you win. Here's some equipment from our stores. Leave us alone. Now, I'm not going to accept surrender. Because what if I wasn't as prepared? What if I was some innocent civilian ship? Oh. Um, they have a special ability, their ship, that means that sometimes they resist damage. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. So one of these fuels, two of these missiles, I don't have any missile requiring weapons right now, but I might get some later, and 24 of the scrap. So a good thing we can do here is just sit and wait for the asteroids to miss my ship because that'll upgrade my pilot and my engine upgrade Jackson so that they're able to dodge more stuff. But we don't have time for that. Let's go to the store and see what they have. A ship engineer has set up a small shop here. So there's a few drones, but there's... I don't really have a drone control. I think I'm just going to fix up and buy a bunch of fuel from this place. Let's head up to here, and that's a star, so let's not go near the star. So, here there's a rebel scout that it's deactivated and we can either try and see what information is in it or just destroy it. Now. Ooh. Oh. So I just got a map of the sector, but I already had a map of the sector, so that's pretty useless. But I did get some scrap and missiles and fuel, which is useful. So let's head to this distress beacon. See what the people here want. You have encountered a refugee ship drifting in space. It looks as if it was fleeing the rebel advance and ran out of fuel. Its distress beacon is active, but you're not sure if anyone is on board, and its communications seem to be down. Prepare to board and investigate. The ship is completely abandoned. There is no trace of the crew or any cargo. Mystified, you leave the ghost ship and continue on. I didn't even get to loot it. That's no fair. So let's go see here. You wanna fight me? So, upon completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, 
will let you continue on your way. Pay their toll or reject their offer. I want to fight you, these guys. Too bad you will regret this decision. I don't think I will. Something tells me I won't. So first up, we're going to target their shields. Now that their shields are down, we can attack their... I forgot what it's called. Weapons. And our shields are down. The enemy ship appears to be powering up its FTL. It's trying to escape. Now, that doesn't matter because next hit, they're going to be dead. So unless they get a miracle, they're not getting away. I blew them up. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Two fuel, one drone part, and 23 scrap. So we're all good now. We can go up to this place and see what this ship is too. You recognise the outline of a mantis ship against the blackness. Engage. Okay, so the previous... No, I'm going to pause the game. You might think that the, these two ships, this one and the one I just first, look almost the same apart from the room arrangement. But this one, you can tell, is an actual mantis ship. Mantis being one of the species in the galaxy. Because it's just plain red. Well, the other one was a pirate ship because it was covered in the paint mark, the purple paint markings. Well, let's continue. Let's take out their shields first, like last time. Ow. So, I'm not too worried about their weapons, so I'm just going to focus on completely destroying their shields. Now we can take out their weapons. And they're gone. The ship explorers leaving behind a substantial collection of useless scrap material, blah de blah blah. Now let's go to the exit and jump to the next sector. You've arrived at the long range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. You pick up an automated message from a nearby base station. There appears to be a local shipwright that can perform emergency work on military ships. So let's see what they can do. Sensors. So they can upgrade my sensors in exchange for some scrap. I'd like that. So now if we... That pause button. If I go into their ship, I should be able to see. Yeah, I can see inside the enemy ship. And then if I get upgraded again, which I can do, but I'm not going to, I'll be able to see their weapon charge. And then this one, you can't upgrade it to that, but you can have it that level by having a person there. And that lets you see enemy power use. But I think I'm going to upgrade this. Actually, you know what? I don't need to for now. I think some power would be better. So let's head to the next sector. This one looks a lot friendlier. It's like this path along here looks a lot friendlier. So I think we should go on this one. But since we're at a new sector, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys all next time.